What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Davy J here. That's what these daft fuckers say, right? And boy, have I got a treat for you today. Let me ask a question. What rhymes with grape and... Um... Miss... Shape? Uh, it's Ape Escape. It's Ape Escape. Yeah, you can't really blame me for not having much of an intro for a game that's not based on any pre-existing film or show or toy or whatever. But despite that, this popular PlayStation exclusive does actually hold a prominent position in video game history, being the first game to require the brand new Super Advanced DualShock controller. You know, or it wouldn't work. So yeah, if you got the game but only had the original PlayStation controller, <laughs> guess what, dickhead? You're fucked! But joking aside, you can bet that must have happened at least a couple times. Some kid's parent who wasn't up to date with all the new fangled gaming tech was just browsing the shelves at their local video store, saw the game sitting there in between Crash Bash and Carmageddon, and was like, eh, hate this game. Looks harmless enough, should keep the little bastards quiet for a few hours, brings it home, gives it to the kids, sneaks off for a little alone time with the missus, and then he is, Dad, the game won't work. Oh yeah, you can bet there were some pissed off parents. Having just forked over 40 fucking quid for a game only to find out the need to buy a new controller just to play the fucking thing. Bloody daylight robbery if you ask me! But just how well has the first ever Jewel Shock game aged? Well, let's find out. Cue lots of Planet of the Apes references, along with any other monkey related references I can think of. But before we do that, um, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe so you don't miss a single video. That's what they say as well, right? Did I say it right? Yeah? Okay, good. Fuck, I hate my life. So Ape Escape is a third-person platformer developed for PS1 by Sony's Japan Studio and published by Sony Computer Entertainment in 1999. And, yep, that's really all there is to know. We start up the game and first see this helpful screen. Huh. Thanks for letting us know. After we've already bought the fucking game, how come you didn't slap that shit on the front cover fucking big as life? Now to be fair, from what I can tell from my research, some versions had a sticker on the cover and others didn't. But to be honest, could you really expect the average parent or kid back then to take notice and know what the fuck it meant? I mean, I didn't know what a dual shock was back then. All I knew was you had a controller and it controls the game. Some have sticks and some don't. Whatever. Sneaky fuckers. Next we get a quick little intro movie. Oh, look at this cute little fellow. He seems nice, but then he puts on his hat. And oh my god, he's evil! And then, oh shit, the monkeys are escaping! The monkeys are escaping! And shit, they've got fucking guns as well! Yeah, before I wasn't really sure how many Planet of the Apes references I'd be able to get out of this. But isn't this pretty much the basic plot of the first of the new Apes films? An ape gains higher intelligence, is kept in a place where he and his brethren endure abuse and humiliation, then leads a rebellion against their human oppressors. Sounds pretty similar, right? Coincidence? I think not! We then hit new game and are introduced to our main characters, Spike and his best friend, Jake. And is it just me? Or does Spike sort of resemble a miniature anime Todd Howard? Can you see it? Or have I finally lost the last remaining marble I had left? I don't know. There's just something about him that makes me think of Todd. I think it's the hair. Anyway, they're on their way to the lab to see if the professor has completed his time machine, only to find that all hell's broken loose. The monkeys have escaped and taken the professor and his granddaughter Natalie hostage. But before they can help, the lead of the monkeys, the cute little guy from the intro, known as Spectre. I'm a member of Spectre. Spectre? Spectre activates the time machine, sending not only him and his minions, but also Spike and Jake hurtling back in time to the age of the dinosaurs. We then find out that he plans to rewrite history to make apes rule the world, and That is absolutely unacceptable. So there's the premise. You play as young Spike Howard here and go through levels across various time periods, catching the monkeys to stop Spectre from taking over the world. So with that out of the way, we jump straight into the action, and I usually like to play a bit further before I talk about the controls. But since they're such a unique and important feature, I feel I should start there. Uh, aren't controls an important feature in every game? <laughs> you know what I mean, shut the fuck up. The controls can be, um difficult. 
Not necessarily because they're bad, but because they're just so unlike anything else I've ever come across. Seriously, in over 20 years of gaming, I've never seen anything like them. Basically, in pretty much every game that uses the dual shock, at least all the ones I've ever played, you control the character's movement with the left stick and the camera with the right. But here, well, you don't. Here you control Spike's movement with the left stick, while the right stick uses whatever gadget he has equipped. X, square, circle and triangle are used to equip your various gadgets, and the directional buttons control the camera, and you use R1 to jump. So yeah, the control scheme is just wacky to the point that it can take a while to get used to. Seriously, I was probably over a third of the way through the game and still hammering the fucking X button and wondering why the daft fucker wasn't jumping. Although you can't really blame me considering I haven't played this game since I was like eight or something. I had no idea the controls would be like this. But enough about that for now, because we've got a job to do. So how do we catch those damn dirty apes? Well, turns out a couple of the professor's other gadgets got sent back in time with you, including the time net which you'll use to catch the monkeys. Basically, you've just got to get up close to them and swing the net with the right stick to catch them. Although, thankfully, you don't have to be completely dead on. Otherwise, I'm certain the game would have taken a lot longer to beat. But not so fast, bucko, because the monkeys aren't just going to get back in their cage without a fight. They'll run and throw banana skins for you to slip on, slap you around the chops, shoot at you, throw bombs at you, and even fire fucking rockets at you. But luckily, the stun club also got sent back in time. So when you get near the little fuckers, just give them a bop on the head to stop them for a second or two so you can get them in the net. And while that might sound pretty simple, um, not always. Come here, you son of a bitch. Come here. Come here, you, you motherfucker. Get back here, you piece of shit. Come here. You motherfucker. So let's take a look at young Spike's abilities. He can run and jump, climb poles and trees, and swim with the water net. You can also push the left stick gently to have him walk or sneak, which can help traverse some of the more difficult platforming bits. And you can also press in the left stick to crawl, which lets you sneak up on monkeys and catch them unawares. So while Spike himself doesn't have a huge number of abilities, the game makes up for it with another prominent feature, the gadgets, of which there are quite a few, each of which utilises the dual shock controller to its full potential. As you progress through the game, new gadgets are unlocked, and we might as well go through them now. As mentioned earlier, you start off with the stun club and the time net. Then you get the water net which allows you to swim and can deploy nets to catch monkeys in the water. Then there's the monkey radar, the slingshot, the super hoop, the sky propeller, the RC car that can access small spaces that Spike can't fit into and flush out monkeys, and the magic punch which can smash through certain walls and defeat enemies that are otherwise invulnerable. These help make for varied and engaging gameplay, and I really do mean it when I say they fully realise the potential of the dual shock controller. You use the left stick to move Spike, and the right to use the gadgets, such as pulling it back to fire the slingshot, rotating it to use the propeller and charge up the super hoop, and you use the right stick to control the RC car while controlling Spike independently with the left stick. It's integrated well and doesn't come across as just a gimmick. Unlike, you know, some of the other stuff Sony's come out with in more recent years. Yeah, I think after doing something truly innovative with the original DualShock, Sony's been chasing that same level of innovation ever since. Like the motion sensing DualShock 3 that made you do daft shit like shake the controller and make your fucking light work in The Last of Us. Cause that's fun. You know you're just sneaking around trying to avoid getting eaten by a bloke with a fucking mushroom growing out of his fucking head, but then your light suddenly goes out and you've got to stop and shake the fucking controller to get it to work again. Because that's not annoying at all. Or remember that stupid dragon game? You know, where you had to move the controller all over the place to control the dragon? Yeah, because that shit really took off. Pun very much intended. <laughs> and then we had the Dual Shock 4 with the touch screen that was only used in like one game that I ever came across. And the little speaker that played sound effects from the game, which I guess was supposed to make you feel more immersed, but instead just made you go, what the fuck was that? When you forgot about it and then you suddenly hear a door unlock in fucking Resident Evil 2. And now we've got the haptic sensory shit with the dual sense, which sounds pretty cool in theory, but in the end comes across as just another unnecessary gimmick. But anyway, your objective throughout most of the game is to simply catch the monkeys. At the start of each level, you're told how many monkeys there are, and how many you have to catch to pass which is always less than the total per level, because, like with most games from this era apparently, there's some monkeys you won't be able to catch until later because they require gadgets that you don't have yet. But as soon as you catch the required number, that's the level done, which I kind of wish the game didn't do. 
Like, as soon as you catch the last monkey, the level instantly ends. I would have preferred if you were given the option of continuing and exploring further, because there were some apes I could have got then instead of having to go back later. The game's divided into several hub worlds based upon a specific era, which are then divided into three levels each. In addition to catching the monkeys, there's also these gold chips to collect, and when you collect a hundred, you get a new life, and there's also the spectre coins, which unlock a few additional mini games. These can be accessed from the time station, where you'll be brought to when you start up the game or quit a level. Now even though these stages and levels are meant to be based on actual periods from history, I thought some didn't have quite as much character as others and didn't feel quite as distinct. For instance, you've got stages like the Prehistoric Era and then the Cenozoic Era, which are two separate eras, but aside from one having dinosaurs and the other not, they don't seem all that different from one another. And then you've got the Primitive Age and the Ice Age, which didn't feel as much like time periods as more like a beach-themed stage than an ice-themed stage, which is fine, I suppose. I mean, they look and play fine, but contrast this with another time travel game, Bugs Bunny Lost in Time, where you've got a bunch of different time periods, the Stone Age, the Pirate Years, the 1930s, the Medieval Period, and Dimension X. And if you look at each one, you can tell straight away what they are. They're visually distinct, they've all got their own look and style, while some of the eras in Ape Escape, I feel, just don't have that same level of character. Like, I wish there could have been a few more distinct time periods in addition to the ones we got. I just think it would have been fun to chase monkeys around pirate ships, ancient Egypt or the 1930s. But it's not a huge issue. The levels are well designed and look good enough, so really it's just me being a miserable nitpicky piece of shit. Anyway, as you progress through the game, you'll encounter a few more challenges that utilise the dual shock controller. Like the boat sections, where you use the sticks to move the oars, the left stick control on the left oar and the right stick control on the right, rotating the sticks clockwise and anti-clockwise to go forward and backwards. Basically, in order to move effectively, you have to try and move the sticks in time with one another. Which, for someone like me, who has the coordination of a walrus on fentanyl, yeah, easier said than done. I don't want to go that way, man. No! Go, go there. Okay, turn around. Turn around there. Okay, let's go. No, 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 man, don't turn it. I don't want to go that way. Turn it around. There. Right, no, what the fuck, man? No, fuck off. Fuck, man. T fucking turn it around. Fuck, it'd be easy to do this in real fucking life. Don't get me wrong, it's a cool bit, and another good way to take full advantage of the dual shock. It's just something that takes a little while to get the hang of. But what the fuck happened to Jake? I mean, he got caught in the time machine as well. So where is he? Well, actually, he's dead. Yep. Came out in a raptor nest, got eaten alive. Poor kid never stood a chance. Clever girl. Just kidding, because turns out, oh shit. Jake, you're working with Spectre now? You motherfucker. But something doesn't seem quite right about him. Hmm, I think Spectre's been playing around in his egg salad. Yeah, he's been brainwashed and now wants to smoke your ass. <laughs> so it's pretty much just like the main characters in Star Wars Jedi Academy. Remember that? Man, I've got to play that again at some point. So anyway, you'll be confronted by Jake at several points throughout the game. Just like how in Pokemon, Gary Oak will come crawling out from under his stone every once in a while to fuck with you. But these aren't boss fights as you might expect, but instead races that test your abilities with the gadgets you've acquired so far. Pretty simple, but once again, easier said than done. Yeah, they may look pretty easy, but unless you've got these controls nailed to a T, all it really takes is one wrong button and you get stuck, and then the traitorous bastard races off into the lead and you can't catch him. Thankfully, you don't need to beat these stages in order to continue. Otherwise, your brand new super cool dual shock controller will probably have gone out the fucking window the same day you got it. But if you just can't bear to let the fucker have the last laugh, or if you're just some kind of fucking masochist, then you can go back and try again as many times as you want. Now, even though some of the levels and eras may not have had quite as much character as I might have liked in an aesthetic sense, I did enjoy the design in terms of layout and challenge. They're not completely open, but they're not completely linear either, since you don't have an explicitly defined endpoint to reach. Instead, it's more about exploring and catching monkeys wherever you find them. And to be honest, after the last couple of games, I was kind of getting bored of levels where your only objective is to just reach the end. The levels are divided into smaller areas, most of which lead into one another, but some don't, so you may not see all areas of a level the first time you play it. I also like the level design in terms of the individual set pieces they offer. 
There's a lot of cool platforming sections that get pretty intricate and challenging at times, and there's a good amount of variation, to the point where I never felt that the game was getting stale or repetitive. Out of the games I've played so far, these are some of the best design levels I've seen yet. So eventually you arrive in the medieval period and confront Spectre and Jake at Spectre's castle, but there's no time to stop them before they teleport back to the present and capture the Professor and Natalie. Spike follows, only to find that the unthinkable has happened, I'm home. Spectre's plan has come to fruition and the monkeys now rule the earth. Wow, really? It was that easy? Seriously, all Spectre had to do was go back in time and rewrite history and now the world belongs to him? How come the apes never did that in the films? It just seems so easy. Seriously, how are we almost on four films and no one, either on the human or ape side, has thought to just go back in time and rewrite the past? Away, man, step it up. But just because the apes have the earth now doesn't mean that the war's over. Because there's one thing Spectre didn't count on. You. You are all that stands in his way. So now we're hunting monkeys in the present. But even though the Professor and Natalie have been captured, we're still not alone since we still have the supercomputer Cassie to help us. But before we go any further, let's take a time out and look at the presentation side. I really like the graphics. The character models are a bit simple, but I like their 3D anime style and there's an impressive level of detail in the environments, particularly in the later stages. Some of the textures are a bit rough, but there's a good use of colour and lighting, and I just think it's a great looking game for the time. The voice acting is, for lack of a better phrase, absolute fucking shite. Although I can only speak for the US version since that's the one I'm playing. No idea if the original Japanese voice acting is any better, although it wouldn't surprise me. But really, just about anything would have been better than this shit. I mean, just listen to this. Well, look who's here. So you finally found us. Spectre. Jake! And how is everything coming along? Everything is under control and coming along very nicely according to plan. Some of the characters are kind of okay, but for the most part it sounds like the actors are just reading all their lines from a script, which, um, they all do. And I'm doing right now. But at least we make it sound like we're not. Most of the time at least. Hmm. I love the soundtrack, in fact it's probably one of my favourites, at least out of the games I've reviewed so far. It was composed by Soichi Tarada, a popular Japanese electronic producer, and mixes elements of techno and J-pop along with the traditional trappings associated with the individual eras like the beach and ice levels. The result is an upbeat and catchy mix of styles that complements the graphics and gameplay to create a fun and engaging atmosphere. There's some great sound design outside of the soundtrack as well. I love the monkey sounds. I'm guessing they were done by a voice actor, but you could tell me they snuck a mic into the local zoo and recorded some actual monkeys and I'd probably believe you. They're that good. And I like all the additional sound effects, like the blips and bloops when you hit switches and stuff, and the sounds of the gadgets as well. They all have that traditional bright Japanese style to them that's instantly recognisable and has stuck in my mind for years. So anyway, eventually we arrive at the amusement park, now renamed Spectreland, where Spectre is holding the Professor and Natalie and this was where the game started to get a bit difficult. There's a few different areas you have to go through to save your friends, like the roller coaster section to save Natalie, which is pretty much the same as the minecar level from Bugs Bunny Lost in Time, but let me tell you, you need to have the reflexes of a fucking cat to avoid these barriers, fuck me. So you make it through and save her, but Yeshua has a funny way of showing her gratitude. Ah, oh, what have you been doing all this time? Huh, <laughs> you're welcome. Maybe next time I'll just leave you in that cage to starve, you fucking ungrateful c- Anyway, next up was the Professor, who you find in Spectre's circus. And this bit was a real bitch. The Professor's inside this cage and you've got to get to the top to get him out. So you work your way around, making your way up, slowly but surely, and this was where the controls fall a bit short. When I was bouncing on these platforms, it was hard to get Spike facing in the right way to get to the next one, which inevitably led to me falling. Again... Fuck. And again. Fuck. And again. Fuck. And again. Fuck. So once you finally bust the professor out, it's then time to face that backstabbing motherfucker Jake. So yeah, there are boss fights in this game. In addition to the main bosses, you'll also encounter a few mini bosses, particularly in the later stages. Although most of these play out in pretty much the same way. You just get behind them and whack them a couple times with the stun club, and that's all it takes. Same for Jake. All you've got to do is wait for him to try and smush you with his giant fucking Hot Wheels car, then jump out the way, run around the back and whack the green target, and there you go. His car blows up, he turns back to the light side, and then it's on to face Spectre. 
although first we've got more of his bullshit to fight through. And these were some of the hardest parts of the game. It's not a super difficult game overall, although there are a few bits that genuinely made me want to put my head through the fucking wall. Anyway, you reach Spectre and he tries to turn you to the dark side like he did with Jake, but Spike refuses to be swayed. I'm looking forward to completing your training. In time, you will call me Master. You're gravely mistaken. You won't convert me as you did. Jake. Your overconfidence is your weakness. Your faith in your friends is yours. Then he jumps in his giant mech. I guess he's been enjoying the new armoured core, and it's time to fuck his white ass up. So this fight starts in a way that I don't think I've ever seen before. You actually see from the boss's perspective. That was a little confusing to get my head around at first, but once I did it wasn't too bad. You've just got to avoid his attacks and run up and whack him with the stun club. After that you move on to the next stage. The game goes back to the regular perspective and you just hit the green button when it appears. Do that a few times and you win. But it's still not over because Spectre just teleports away like a little fucking bitch, vowing to return and take his revenge. So even though Spike saved the day, his work is still not done. Not until Spectre is locked back up in his cage. Or in the ground. Either works just fine. But we can't go after him until all the remaining monkeys are captured. And that means going back through and catching all the ones that we missed. Now armed with all the gadgets, so there's nowhere left for the fuckers to hide. This didn't take too long. You're told how many monkeys there are left in each level, and then you just use the radar to track them all down. And once you've done all that, it's time for the final showdown. This fight's a bit different from what's come before, but it's still pretty simple. He starts off flying around in his chair, so you can't hit him with the club, and instead have to use the slingshot. But it only works after he attacks, because... that makes sense. Then once you blast him out of his chair, he finally decides to fight like a man. And all you have to do is wait for his shield to come down and smack him around the head with the club a few times. And then get his arse in the time net. And there you go. You're done. You get the helmet off his head and he goes back to being just another dumb, dirty ape. And with the world saved, Spectre gets to return to his life of abuse and ridicule at the amusement park. And you know, I kind of feel sorry for him. I mean, in the end, all he wanted was to be free. And to overthrow all the governments of the world and install himself as its new ultimate overlord while enslaving all of humanity. And you know, I can really sympathise with that. So that's it for Escape, and in conclusion, yeah, it's good. If you're looking for a platformer that continues to challenge, doesn't get stale and repetitive, and offers more than just the usual run here, jump on this platform, don't fall into this chasm, then you should give it a shot. Alright, so there's more to it than just that. The controls can take a little while to get used to, but once you do, there aren't that many problems. The use of the dual shock is implemented effectively and makes the gameplay fun and unique without getting annoying or coming across as just a gimmick. The levels are well designed and interesting, there's some great challenges and set pieces, the graphics are good and the soundtrack's fucking class. I did have a couple complaints here and there, but none of them are really game breaking. So yeah, I think Ape Escape holds up and would recommend it to anyone who never managed to play it back in the day, and everyone who did to go back and give it another go, you won't be disappointed. So considering Ape Escape was such a hit with gamers and critics alike, you couldn't expect a company that loves money as much as Sony to just stop there, could you? Of course not! A couple years later you had Ape Escape 2 on PS2, and holy shit Ape Escape 3! I didn't even know about that one! Then of course you had a bunch of spin-offs and party games ported to other systems like the PSP. But what does the future hold for Ape Escape? Well over the years there have been hints that a fourth entry could be in the works, despite Japan's studio being shut down and merged with other Sony studios in 2021. Although at this point nothing concrete's been said, so all we can really do is hope that someday we see another full Ape Escape game, which would be amazing. I mean just imagine all the weird and wacky shit Sony could have us doing with the dual sense. I honestly don't know whether to be enchanted or terrified. Well this was another hard one to do, but we made it in the end. What did you think of Ape Escape? Why don't you let me know in a comment that I'll never read? Thank you very much for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed. If you did then... Oh... Must I? Oh... Very well. Don't forget to smash the fuck out of that like button and hit subscribe so you don't miss a single mother fucking video! Fuck, what have I been reduced to?